to the Foundation Day celebrations of the Public Health Foundation of India. Completing nine years since our inception in 2006, and in keeping with our custom, we gather each year to collectively train the spotlight on a public health issue of global and national importance. We deeply appreciate your presence here today. This is also an opportunity to take a step back and to assess our progress in reinforcing the importance of, the pub of public health in India's policy agenda through rigorous research, comprehensive training, and passionate advocacy. We have grown to several hundred technical staff across five institutes in this period under the adept leadership of our president and mentor, Professor K. Srinath Reddy. I'd like to now invite Professor Reddy to deliver welcoming remarks. Good evening, friends, old and new of PHFI. It's a great pleasure for me to welcome you all to this evening's event where the Public Health Foundation of India now is looking back at the nine years of its existence and wishes to move forward to the 10th year with a great sense of anticipation of new partnerships which will help us towards new accomplishments. In the nine years of our existence, we have managed so far, with help from many of you here, to set up four functioning institutes of public health in the Delhi capital region, the national capital region of Delhi, in Gandhinagar, in Hyderabad, and Bhuvaneshwar. Each of these has been functioning from a temporary campus, but now we have the pleasure of announcing that our campus in Gandhinagar is ready for opening in June to receive students from July. <laughs> On February 3rd this year, the Chief Minister of Telangana also laid the foundation stone for the construction of our second campus in Hyderabad, and this will now speed ahead. We also now have activated our fifth institute at Shillong in Meghalaya, and there again, the process of campus construction is set to begin sometime this year with funding being provided by multiple agencies, including the Northeastern Council. So with five institutes this year functioning in order to set up training programs afresh, as well as continuing some of the training programs that have already been initiated, I believe our mandate for building capacity in public health is going to be further advanced. We have great pleasure in announcing again that in February and March, we have now passed the main hurdle of acquiring a university status for one of our institutes. The Gandhinagar Institute, Indian Institute of Public Health now, is a university of public health. And it will commence its MPH programs from the July this year. In Hyderabad too, the government of Telangana has given permission to the Indian Institute of Public Health in Hyderabad to commence its MPH program in affiliation to the State University of Health Sciences, again, to commence in July this year. We have already been running a joint MPH program in Hyderabad in partnership with the Central University of Hyderabad. That will continue. We have been running two MSc PhD programs in partnership with the Academy of the Council of Science and Innovation Research, which is an affiliate of the CSIR, one in health informatics and one in clinical research, and these two will continue. In addition, we have been running three other on-campus diploma programs and 13 distance education programs some of these will undergo some modifications. Some of them will get merged into our MPH program, but some will continue because they have a very clearly customized constituency for training and deployment. Our research efforts have been substantially fruitful, not only in terms of the very large number of funded grants, but also with now currently over 1,600 published papers many of them in very high impact journals. We have now grown to a technical pool of 700 plus and a PHFI family strength of 900 plus. 
deployed over these locations. But in addition, we have ancillary campuses in Bangalore and in Gwalia in state government provided facilities. We have just now been invited by the West Bengal University of Health Sciences to set up an MPH program under their auspices, but to be entirely run by us with co-branding. We have also been invited now by the government of Tamil Nadu to open a facility in government provided facilities for building capacity in Tamil Nadu. We believe that there's a great opportunity for us to work with several of the state governments in strengthening their health system capacity efforts and in turn learn from their successes and their initiatives. We have, in addition, been working very closely with central and state governments across the board in providing technical support in very many areas. Two major areas where we have been working with them have been in the area of HIV AIDS where the technical support unit for prevention for the National AIDS Control Program is now through PHFI. And the routine immunization technical support unit for the government of India is also from PHFI now over the last two years. And if you have seen the launch of the Indra Dhanush program, that again is with the support of the technical team from PHFI. We have also been asked to develop not only the blueprint, but also to advance the implementation of allied health professional training in this country through the creation of a National Institute for Allied Health Sciences and several regional institutes, which the government of India will undertake but PHFI, along with other partners, will provide the technical support. So in very many senses, in bring, bringing muzzle to the health system of India, PHFI is playing a role that it was intended to do. We have indeed gone somewhat beyond our mandate, initial mandate, in also establishing a unit for affordable health technologies by bringing in one engineer three years ago, and that has now grown to a strength of 50 engineers. We're now developing several transformational health technologies for advancing the outreach and effectiveness of primary health care services. And I, with great pride, I can say that the Swastia Slate, which has been one of the principal products that has been developed by this team, was described about five months ago by the Wall Street Journal as one of the six transformational health technologies in the world which will benefit millions of people. Subsequently, it's been reported in the Washington Post, in the Chicago Times, and as late as last month, we have had a visit from the British NHS which wants to take it up there. But we believe it's India that must benefit first. So this is now in deployment in six districts of Jammu and Kashmir where close to 3,000 plus auxiliary nurse midwives are trekking with these units in a solar-powered backpack across the districts, providing currently a range of 33 diagnostic tests, point-of-care diagnostic tests, uh, through the maternal and child health program, and with decision support systems, data upload immediately into the cloud for an monitoring and analysis at multiple levels, right from the, the immediate spot of uh, where the oxygen nurse midwife is, but also to the block and the state capital and the central mission monitoring team. And uh, there is now a request from other states too to apply this, and we are really looking at this being a potentially transformational technology for health services. Uh, and uh, this now range of uh, diagnostic tests is currently at 50, but our insatiable engineers, who are proud to label themselves as nerds, are happy now to proceed to a range of about 150. And we really look forward to seeing how they can be used at the doorstep in distant villages because we believe in rural areas that's where we ought to really be positioning it in most of the cases. So we have actually been working in many, very many areas, right from tobacco control and alcohol control. In fact, today we have had a meeting workshop on taxation and alcohol control policy to very many other areas of uh, public health. In fact, the whole spectrum of public health is an area where we have engaged actively. But for us, very, it's very important to recognize the value of partnerships. There are very many Indian partners we have benefited from in terms of our association, and many international partners we have benefited in terms of association. Our own future faculty training program 
has now trained more than 100 people across the world in different institutions of great repute and brought them back to work in India, not only in our institutes, but also sharing them with some of the other institutions. But one of the best examples of this kind of wide-ranging partnership was unveiled only two days ago when the Center for Control of Chronic Diseases was launched from this very platform by the Minister of State for Science and Technology, where a partnership platform has been created between the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, the Rollins School of Public Health, Emory University, the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, and the Public Health Foundation of India in order to advance research which will be able to greatly galvanize the prevention and control of chronic diseases in India, both at the policy level and at the operational implementation level. And this convening platform will be served by a secretariat from PHFI. So we have been working, as I said, in very many areas, but we have not forgotten nutritional deficiencies. We have not forgotten, for example, infectious diseases which continue to be with us, even as we focus on chronic diseases through our center. And that's why the theme that we have chosen this year is infectious diseases. And that's why we have brought HIV AIDS very much onto the platform. And we are also going to have a discussion on infectious diseases in the 21st century to show that these are not areas that we will neglect as we look at chronic diseases. Indeed, in 1969, the Surgeon General of the United States, the then Surgeon General of the United States, testified before the Congress of the United States that we can now close the book on infectious diseases. If there was ever a statement that went so wrong, that was that. So we now know that even in the 21st century, we have to constantly live with the threat of infectious diseases. And that's why we have brought together experts of great repute in this field to now talk to us on this Foundation Day to teach us not only the humility that we cannot make such empty boasts, but also give us the hope that we still have the ability to conquer many of the new threats even if we cannot entirely eliminate them for all time to come. So thank you once again for gracing us with your presence, and we wish to have a wonderful evening of intellectual interaction with you, and we again hope that as you leave this room, you will have become even more strongly embedded in your belief that PHFI is an institution of value to you, and we hope again that you will leave as even a greater friend of PHFI than you were when you entered this hall. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce our guest for this evening. Our chair this evening is Sri JVR Prasad Rao, former Union Health Secretary, Government of India. He is the Special Envoy to the Secretary General of the United Nations on HIV AIDS for the Asia Pacific region. In this capacity, Sri Prasad Rao acts as the representative of the Secretary General to advocate with countries in the region on important policy and strategic issues connected with HIV AIDS. From 1997 to 2002, he was the director of India's National AIDS Control Organization. As Secretary for Health and Family Welfare from 2002 to 4, he made immense contributions to the health sector's development and was instrumental in drafting the National AIDS Prevention and Control Policy and the National Blood Transfusion Policy of India. Sri Prasad Rao participated as, member, as a member of important global initiatives like the Trans Transitional Working Group which decided the operational mechanism for the Global Fund for AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria. Sri Prasad Rao has had his formal education at Andhra University, Vishakhapatnam, and completed his postgraduate studies in nuclear physics, later joining the Indian Administrative Service in 1967. He served on a number of important assignments in the government of West Bengal and later in the government of India before joining the health ministry in 1997 as director of NACO. Sir, welcome. Our guest speaker this evening is Professor James W. Curran. Professor Curran was appointed Professor of Epidemiology and Dean of the Rollins School of Public Health at Emory University in 1995. Graduating from the University of Notre Dame, he received his MD in, from the University of Michigan and later a Master's in Public Health from Harvard University. In 1981, Professor Curran coordinated the Task Force on Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention 
and then led the HIV AIDS division. While at the CDC, he attained the rank of Assistant Surgeon General. Professor Karan is a fellow of the American Epidemiologic Society, the American College of Preventive Medicine, and the Infectious Diseases Society of America. Author or co-author of more than 260 scholarly publications, he was elected to the National Academy of Sciences in 1993. He was given the Surgeon General's Medal of Excellence in 1996, and the John Snow Award from the American Public Health Association in 2003. Welcome, Professor Karan. Our guest of honor this evening is Dr. Soumya Swaminathan. Dr. Swaminathan is a pediatrician by training, having completed a medical education at the Armed Forces Medical College and the All India Institute of Medical Sciences in Delhi, followed by a fellowship in pediatric pulmonology at the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles in the USA. She is currently director of the center and heads the NIH International Center for Excellence in Research. She has over 180 peer-reviewed publications, serves on many national and international committees. Her major research, and research interests are in pediatric and adult TB, their interaction with HIV, and nutrition and management of co-infections, as well as pharmacokinetics and pharmacogenetics. She is an elected fellow of three of India's science academies and chaired the HIV section of the International Union Against TB and Lung Diseases between 2011 and 2013. She also served as coordinator for neglected priorities research at WHO TDR Geneva from 2009 to 11. She is also the recipient of several awards for excellence in biomedical sciences. Welcome, Dr. Swaminathan. Uh, Dr. Manish Kakkar and Dr. Preeti Kumar. Dr. Kakkar joined P PHFI in June 2006 and is currently a senior public health specialist in communicable diseases and an adjunct assistant professor at the Indian Institute of Public Health, Delhi. He coordinates the functioning of the communicable disease unit, providing technical support for research and training to national and state governments on priority communicable disease issues. To mobilize support and consensus around creating a multi-dimensional, multi-sectoral, and integrated system-wide approach to the human-animal interface, he launched the Roadmap to, Zoonosis, Roadmap to Compact Zoonosis Initiative in India in 2008. He is a member of the International Expert Group on the WHO Strategy for Management of Zoonotic Public Health Risks and a member of the One Health Alliance of South Asia. He is also a member of the National Task Force set up to assess, review, and suggest measures on antimicrobial resistance. Dr. Kakar holds medical degrees from University College of Medical Sciences and Maulana Azad Medical College, New Delhi and a master's degree in public health from Harvard University. He has previously worked at Maulana Azad Medical College and in the, depart in the Department of Microbiology and at the World Health Organization's Country Office for India. Welcome, sir. <clears throat> Dr. Preeti Kumar has been working at the intersection of the fields of public health and health systems for the past 20 years. She is an ophthalmologist with, an MP with a master's degree from the London School of Economics and Political Science and the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. She is currently director of training at Public Health Foundation of India. She is also the project director of a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation funded HIV AIDS project, the Partnership for Sustained Impact, which has been providing techno managerial and financial support to the National AIDS Control Organization for scaling up the national prevention program across the country since 2008. Welcome, Dr. Kumar. I would now like to invite our chair, Sri Prasad Rao, to deliver his opening remarks. Dr. Srinath Reddy. Professor James Curran, Dr. Soumya Swaminathan, distinguished panelists, distinguished guests of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. I feel very humbled today to stand before such a learned and distinguished uh, uh, group of people to commemorate the uh, ninth Foundation Day of the Public Health Foundation of India. And on this occasion, I would like to bring greetings from the Secretary General of the United Nations and from the entire UN family to Public Health Foundation under its dynamic leadership uh, of Dr. Srinath Reddy and this Foundation Day and uh, wish many, many more years of uh, very productive and progressive uh, work in the field of public health. It has been nine years, as he has said, and we have crossed many hurdles in the process. As they say that uh, we have crossed the challenges of infant mortality and under five mortality and all those things. I think we're about to become adolescents, I think, from next year onwards. So we have uh, a right to sort of think a little uh, uh, in a non-conformist way, just as any other adolescent. I think these are challenging times for us. 
But there have been many achievements in the last nine years, and um, I have been privileged uh, to be associated with this institute since the beginning. Uh, in fact, the